All right, here we are with Desmos. You guys know how much I love Desmos. I want to show you something that involves sine and cosine. So this is the normal cosine graph. Let me adjust this so that it goes in steps of pi over 4. Okay. So we're seeing the normal sine graph. Now, if you were to take the sine graph and you were to shift it back pi over 2, what would you get? So remember that to shift a function, you have to subtract inside of the function, and it does the opposite of what you want. That's why we subtract. So we would subtract pi divided by 2. Or I'm sorry. We would add pi over 2, which means that it's going to be shifting to the left. All right, yes. Now, what we have there is just cosine of x. So here's a really quick proof of a trig identity graphically. Now there's another way to prove this. Sine of x plus pi over 2 is angle addition. So that's what we're going to get into here. There are some identities where you're going to see these shifts of trig graphs and then it's actually going to be proven by using the angle addition. So let's prove this one here. All right. So we want to prove that sine of x plus pi over 2 is actually the cosine of x function. All right. So I'm going to start with the left side, and I'm going to rewrite it. Now that is the angle addition where alpha is x and beta is pi over 2. And remember, sine is the sine, cosine, cosine, sine version. So we're going to do sine of x, cosine of pi over 2, plus cosine of x, sine of pi over 2. It's a funny looking pi. All right, now let's go through and see what we can figure out. Like cosine of pi over 2. I know that cosine of pi over 2 is actually 0. So if I do 0 times sine of x, I'm getting 0. Plus, and then we move on to the other side. We have cosine of x, and sine of pi over 2 is actually just 1. So we have just shown that using the angle addition formula, sine of x plus pi over 2 is just cosine of x. So we, we showed exactly what we did graphically um, just using algebraic methods. So I need to show you one thing here, though. Um, a lot of times it's not written this way. Sometimes um, it's pi over 2 minus x. Now, it happens to be the same thing because if you factor out a negative and you flip things around, it's equivalent. Um, but in this case, you would do the exact same thing. Alpha, in this case, working out the angle addition formula, alpha would be pi over 2. Beta would be negative x. And so you could still prove the same thing. These are called co-functions. And a lot of people will just give these to students right away. But I think it makes more sense when you think about them with angle addition. Because if you're ever stuck and you don't remember them, you could just use the angle addition formula. Okay, so we have to do another example here. Let's say we needed to prove, and here's an example of a good proof here, cosine of x minus y plus cosine of x plus y. And we need to prove that this is 2 cosine of x cosine of y. So the thing that looks more complicated here to me is the left side. So, And this also involves two separate angle addition identities. Here this is alpha beta and this is alpha beta. So remember cosine is cosine cosine sine sine sine. So this is going to be cosine of alpha cosine of beta. And I wrote alpha and beta, but I should be putting in cosine of x, cosine of negative y, minus sine of x, sine of y. And now that's just, that is just the left side of, of what we're talking about. Now we got to do the right side, which is going to be identical, cosine of x, uh, cosine of y, except it's not going to be a minus y inside. It's actually going to be just a positive y. Okay, now to 
you, you notice that we have um, things almost canceling out. And I realize here I forgot a negative y here. Things are almost canceling out. There just is a negative y here. Um, and this is important. We have to go back and remember an idea from long ago. When it, and a function is even, that means that it has the same value on both sides, whether you go negative or you go positive, you're still going to have the same height. What that really means, kind of like x squared, if you put a negative 2 in an x squared function, you're going to get a positive 4. If you put in a positive 2, you get a positive 4. And it's, it's the same with cosine. Cosine is an even function. So if I put in a y or a negative y, it's still going to be the same thing. So the point of this is, when I see cosine y here, I can actually rewrite it as just cosine of y. So when you see cosine of something that's negative, it's always going to be the same as if you wrote it as positive. Alternatively, I'm looking here at the sine of negative y. Uh, sine is an odd function because its rotational symmetry is rotating 180 degrees, which means that if you put a negative in the function, it's the same as put it, keeping that negative just outside of the function. Kind of like if you do negative 3 cubed, that's the same thing as negative, and then doing the 3 cubed. So in this case, when I have a sine of negative y, instead of keeping the negative inside, I can move it outside because it's odd. So that means that this is going to be plus, because of the double negative. Okay, now I'm going to write the rest of it. The rest of it doesn't include a negative y. And then you can see here, these two right here are like terms. There are two cosine x, cosine y's. So here we go, 2 cosine x, cosine y. And then you'll notice that these two that I'm boxing here are just opposites, so they're going to cancel out. And that is what I was trying to prove. So two things here. Um, sometimes you're going to just have to use angle addition by the way that the problem is set up. But also, you have to keep in mind now that when you have an odd or an even function like cosine or sine, cosine, you, you can basically get rid of the negative that's inside of the function. Sine, though, you can put it outside and make things a little easier.